Right, good morning everyone. We're here at Sally Walsh's dam for a bit of a practice. Um, come with my mate. Hey, oh, tip's gone round, Bazza. Here we go. Yes, uh, come with my mate Barry next door. He's just uh, fishing away and his mate Gaz and there's a couple of other people what have uh, come to practice for the match, the big match we're having on Sunday. Um, what's this? Oh. It's a oh, swinger but not a swinger. Should have used the net barrier. Yeah, so we're just fishing. Pellet feeder and one of them uh, washed out wafter things. Um, I've had a lovely bream, about three pound-ish. Let me cast this out without getting it caught in camera. There we go. Right on the old clip. Right, yeah, so I'm fishing about 45 metres out. Um, started on method, well, pellet feeder. Chuck that out. I've had a couple of roach. Uh, an eye bread and a nice big big skim a big bream about three pound um, so about 45 meters rod I'm using is a um, superior Preston innovation superior superior I don't know even how you say it I think that's right superior um, that's an 11 foot Ten, I think it is. Yeah, something like that. Or eleven eight or something. But it's just perfect for this forty-five meter trip. I could go longer if I want. I could go up to like sixty or something. But there's not really no need here. Um, got a Browning um, Viper reel on there. We uh, eight pound uh, Surfex. Which is great line. Uh, Ricky Richards put me onto that line, and it's great for um, there's hardly any stretch in it and what have you. So it's good for good for bream fishing without using braid. So we thought we'd give it a go. On the side tray, we've just got um, some. Well, I've got 50 50 mix of ground bait, which is. Um, What is it? Special G Green and um, Alibut. It's um, comes in a pink bag. It's Alibut. Um, can't remember its name to be honest. I've got a 50 fix mix of that. I'll show you it while it's on the screen. Um, I've got maggots, pinkies, dead maggots, and um, I've just got a lot of pellets here with some uh, bit of ground bait on them and that's what I'm using for method feeder with just one of these uh, washed out uh, up baits from uh, krill and tuna it is from bait tech they're an 8mm ones and uh, I've got some bigger ones as well um, and some really bright bright coloured ones but I haven't used any of them yet I've tried on um, a pink and and a yellow one and they both seem to be the same to be honest there's no um, no difference about them, but it's great to be here at Sally Walsh's dam. It used to be called Oil Mill Dam, but uh, there was a young lady in about 1960s or 60s that died and drowned here, and that's why they call it Sally Walsh's Lake. Oh, go on. Oh God, nearly went round then. So yeah, they call it Sally Walsh's Lake because this young lady uh, drowned in 1960s and it's always been Sally Walsh's Lake after that. But I think when you Google it on Google Maps, it's uh, Oil Mill Dam. Um, so I'm only on a, on a practice session, like I said, ready for a big match on Sunday. So I thought I'd come down and give it a go because it's the first time I've fished it. Loads of, loads of uh, big swans, but it's going well at the minute. Plenty of roach coming out. Gary next door, he's had a few. Um, further down, there's Gary and there's Andy fishing, and, and there's my mate uh, Alan Norrish, he's fishing as well. But there's a lot of bites coming on this tip line. 
So I thought to uh, just stick on it, see if we can get one of them big bream. But lovely venue, and Gary um, Lemfall, who's the bailiff on here, does a fantastic job, and he's got it uh, got it down to a T. He's going to help me run the match on uh, Sunday. So he's got all the pegs in. There's some pegs called bus stop or something like that, and all sorts of quirky names for them, and which they're further up that way. Um, but yeah, they're all they're all supposed to be decent pegs up up that way, but it's a bit shallower and what have you. Uh, the deeper end of the lakes, this down there. Um, I don't know what pegs they are. Like I say, it's the first time I've fished it. I'm just getting a bit of an idea for next week. But uh, it's not bad, this um, method line. I'm getting odd fish on it, and it keep getting odd bite on it, but I think it's them roach. There seems to be a lot of big roach in here. I prefer if it, if it were bream, that's a bite. That nearly took rod round. What's this? What is this? It'd be one of them roach. Yeah, it doesn't feel that big. Feels like a feels like a roach. Or it might be a little small skimmer. It's not really doing much actually. It might be a, might be a skimmer. No, it's a roach. Oh, come off at net. Bullying him too much. Now we're in. Now we're into net. Yeah, look at this. So yeah, they're a bit of a. It nearly took rod off at red rest. But they're a bit of a pain then when you're fishing for bream. Um. So just a pink, pink wafter on there. Pellet feeder. I like to use these pellet feeders a bit more than method feeders. To be honest, they're easier to load up. Put loads of bait in them, um, and on a place like this, Gary says you've got to put plenty of bait in. So, just a chuck on the old uh, 45 meter line, hit the clip, and we're back in. Fantastic bite, nearly took a rod off at rest. I'm hoping to come on this short line in a minute anyway and just have a go on that. See, I know there'll be loads of roach on it to be honest. Because uh, Barry next door is getting roached out on it. So I don't know what to do for the match yet at the minute. But we're getting a lot of fish on this, a uh, lot of bites on this method. Barry's just uh, whacking a big method out. See what he has on that. But yeah, um, it's an absolute fantastic place uh, here and um, we should be all good for the uh, match on uh, Sunday. The big feeder cup. We've got about, well, we've got 30 booked on. All paid up as well, so that's good. No messing about. Obviously, we all this uh, COVID, coronavirus and that, and we're, um, we're doing the draw. Everyone's sat in the car while the passes by, and we're going to do the draw for them, and then... You know, it's up to them to get to the pegs and what have you, and then weigh in. We've got uh, four organisers what are going to help weigh in and go around and make sure it's done properly. So 
I start we get another bream on this. Be nice. So I've got two other rods set up. I've got um, both on uh, Map Parabolics Black Editions, 10 foot. Lovely rod they are. Uh, and my favourite favourite rods at the minute. Just perfect for that short chuck, you know, 30 metres. Plus on feeder, you know, method feeder as well, catching carp, so they're great. Um, and that's got the same line on the um, Suffolk line. It's a uh, 018 and it's eight pound line really nice stuff don't don't stretch so it's like it's like alternative from fishing braid really um no I, I don't i don't think i need to fish braid at the minute um i'm hoping to get catch the bites on that so um but i've been fishing um Oh, I'll just tell you what I've got on that. I've just got a method feeder set up on one and then a normal feeder set up on it as well on the other rod. So I'm going to chuck both over the same line. Um, start on conventional and then if I'm getting roached out or I'm getting it slows down and I'm getting a couple of bream I might chuck method over the top. Um, and I've got a fluorocarbon up length on that. I really like using them fluorocarbon up lengths um, for bream fishing as well, for feeder fishing and pole fishing. Um, Oliver Scothorn got on, got got me on to him. He just says that he's uh, he started using them, never really looked back. But for bream fishing, they seem to be like they seem to be have no stretching, you know, not much stretching the line as well. So you seem to get the bite a lot quicker and see it a lot better. Um, but since I've been using, I never look back on them um, fluorocarbon up lengths. Yeah, and I just use Preston ones. They just uh, got an 012, 014, and 016 in them. Um, and then on hook on, it's barbless hooks only. Here, so on the hook, I've got um, a carp maggot, a red, red uh, 16. It is carp maggot. I'm going to try two dead reds on that. I think a red hook seems to complement it a lot better than just a um, just a normal standard. I really like using them red hooks as well. I think the you know when you're fishing red maggot and stuff, it just stands out a bit better. But I've uh, got a lot of confidence in them. On method feeder on this one. Um, I just use an already Guru Tide hook length. Um, I think it's nine pound, and it's uh, a fourteen hook on this one. Barbless again. We are spike on because I'm using these wafters. Um, these krill and tuna ones. Are, oh, that's a bite. Go on. And I've missed it. How can you miss that? Nearly pulled rod round and I missed it. I think there's too many of them roaching on that on that line. I don't seem to be getting the the bream. I think it's them roach bites. We'll give it another go. I'll have one more go on this, and then I'm gonna go on that short line. Same spot again. Clipped up, nice easy chuck. Wind off your back. We were gonna fish over there in wind blowing in your face, but it'd be a blooming rate nightmare. So we'll have one more go on this uh, pellet feeder. See if we can get a bream. It. If not, we're just gonna have a quick go on the old uh, short line, and hopefully. That should be uh, stacked up with them roach, I reckon. Just sink that line. There we go. But yeah, can't believe I missed that one. It nearly took rod off at rest, and no, and then you go into it, and there's no there. So I don't know what's going on.
see if we can get one this time. Didn't take long for that bite to go then. So hopefully it won't take long. Normally getting bites about five, five to seven minutes. Um, and that that bream came, that bream uh, what I call come really early on. I chucked it in. We're only in a couple of minutes, and it went round, and, and we had that bream. So seemed to be quite quick. I'm glad we're not fishing over there. It seems to be uh, getting worse this wind. At least we're a bit sheltered here. Lovely, lovely nice and quiet here, no one walking around or anything, nice day for it, lovely day for bream fishing, overcast, windy, it probably would have been better going over on that other side and I think we'd have caught more bream but it's just, just nice here out, out at wind and uh, in a bit of a t-shirt so it's uh, nice fishing. I don't know who that is over there, but he's over there in the wind, facing the wind, he's uh, rallying it out. Come on, go round. Oh, oh, there we are. Stuck. Yeah, that's stuck. Yeah, there's too many, too many roach there. It's another roach bite. And just, you can tell it's a roach zigzagging on you as you're winding through. It's only a small fish. So I think we'll get this one in and then we'll have a go on that other line. Oh, it's come off anyway. Them seem to be uh, soft mounts, not like these uh, heavy lines, these roach. So we'll leave that, I think. We know we can uh, catch a few roach on that. And we'll go on to this conventional setup. down right <clears throat> so like I said on this one conventional setup um, and we're gonna try two dead red maggots and uh, we'll just put a few dead red maggots in there and just, just cap it off with ground bait so this one's about 30 metres, well, not even that long I think, yeah it's, it's only short, maybe 25, something like that. And this one's really for catching, it is for really catching them roach, so we'll just see what happens eh? see if we can get a few on this. Never know, I might catch them bream short. So when I first started I did um I put seven feeders out long on that uh, method feeder line. I've got an in in change interchangeable um pellet feeder on it so I can I can put like um a ground bait feeder on it and that's what I that's what I bit you know filled it in with first put put the ground bait feeder on chucked it out uh, seven times and then I put my pellet feeder on after that um, a lot of people I don't know why I just like the pellet feeder a bit more than a method feeder to be honest it's easier to fill up I can put eight mils uh, I can put four mils in it I can put Bit different bits of baits in, in the in the pellet feeder, and then cap it off with like micros and ground bait if I wanted to. And they seem to be all right, them um, Preston pellet feeders. So I put seven out in long, and then I put 
uh, seven short as well only small feeders short um, just with maggots and ground bait and what have you. I'll probably mop that up now because I've been on that method for about two hours um, catching odds and sods on it and then that decent bream so they've probably mopped it up and gone I reckon on this so we might have to might take a few chucks to get them back on get them roach back on this line not had any indications yet I think them roach are because they don't get fish for that much they must be blooming hungry because as you see there's a few carpers on today and what have you but them roach you know they're eight 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 ounce ten ounce you know the decent to fish to fish for just had a bit of a knock then but they're really good bites up method feeder and we'll just see what they're like on this are they going to rip rod round or is it uh, they're going to be pecking at it Nothing as of yet. Let's have another cast that's been in what a few minutes. This reel's uh, a bit noisy. Could do with a bit of a service to be honest, but it does the uh, trick. Let's put some more maggots in. Get it chucked out over that same same spot. Nice short chuck there, easy. See if we can get on. I have brought a, um, well, I've always got it, but I do fancy trying a bit of a maggot feeder on this as well for them roach. Sometimes you don't need a lot of ground bait. <coughs> So I've got I've got half a pint some half a pint of maggots here just so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try a maggot feeder on this line maybe in an hour or so see if I can get to get them going on this but yeah set up on this uh, ten foot map parabolics black edition fantastic rod loads of give in it especially for carp as well I've had you know carp on it um, I remember when I bought it and Mark Mark, um, Mark from Stain for Tackle he were like the best rods that he's ever used and uh, I think he caught like a 20 pound pike on it and he said it was no problem coming in and it's so soft and, and lovely so just had a bit of a knock then um, so yeah, I got two of these, fantastic, and like I said, I've got this, um, I've got a Matrix reel and it only costs about 50 quid, and it's, it, the other one's great, there's no noise on it at all, it's fantastic for like short chucks, but this one just makes a bit of noise, that's, um, I think I've had it in some water, dunked it in some water or something, and it's got a bit to uh, do with some WD-40 on it, I think. I thought this would be, we're going to go around pretty much straight away, but it's um, it's taking its time. Maybe the like I said, it's gone and the vet all the snap and gone. Oh, that we're about. It. There we are. Oh, what's this? This is twanging. This don't feel like a roach. You know what this feels like? Feels like an eel. This does not fit. Oh no, it look, it's come to the top, I think. I've just seen it. I think it's a bream. <coughs> yeah, I think it, it, it felt like an eel way it was shaking its head at one point. But uh, it's just. Oh, 
it just come to the top. Let's have a look, see if we can see it. It did feel like an eel at one point. But no, it's a big bream. Fantastic. They're the ones what we want. We didn't, we didn't want roach on this line. We wanted some big, oh, God. Wait, it we're nodding. Wait, we're nodding. I thought, God. Look, there you are. Oh. It's putting up more of a fight in the net. Oh. Look at that. Look at that for a brain. What's that? Four, four or five foot, man. Four poundish. Fantastic fish, isn't it? Let's put him back. Go on. There he goes. Oh, I won't mind him in the old match. That's all right. Baz on that short line, isn't it? I weren't. Uh, I didn't plan on him coming so soon. So that's my first fish on that. Hey, you just seen, haven't you? So just picked it up. Double red. Let's try that again. Get back in. Same line again. Didn't really pull rod round that much. But at first I thought, here we go. It's an eel. Because it were, uh, there's some big ones in here as well. That was nice on that short line. Let's see if we can get another one. Bigger on that were bigger than that one I had on method feeder as well. Just went then, roach her in. Now we've got the roach back. Oh. But he caught me on then. You can tell when roach are back because you get them dinks on your blooming. Dink, dink, dink like that. There were no, no there for ages. And then it uh, went with that brain. Let's see if we can get another one. Just hope he weren't the only one there. Right, that's that. Um, so we've had a great day. Just back on the old uh, method now. I had to put the other camera away because it started raining and what have you. So I just got a GoPro just to finish it off. But yeah, not too bad. I didn't like, um, just chuck it method out long and then coming short. I'd want to chuck really a roach and, and perch and odds and sods on that short line and we had that decent bream on it as well didn't get any more bream on that but went back on method for the last um, hour um, as we were packing up and uh, caught another bream which were quite nice size about two and a half three pound so had a nice uh, pleasure day hope you've uh, picked up a few tips there on uh, method fishing and uh, bream fishing at Sally Walsh's hopefully We'll do all right in the match next week. We'll just have to see where we get pegged. Um, it all looks fantastic, really, and uh, there looks to be a few better pegs than others. But we'll see on the day. So um, yeah, that's it, really. So thanks for watching. Hat Suddy's T-shirts all available, and uh, just message me at bagup.tv at gmail.com if you want uh, any merch. And we'll see you next time. Keep on bagging.